Hello everyone, Kay here. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome back to my homestead. If you're new here, I live on a little over nine acres. I'm trying to grow my own food. Got a long way to go. Learned a lot from being on this larger property after such a small space in California. I hope you'll join me by subscribing. Click that bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an episode. Well, if you're like me, it's September the 6th, I think. I kind of lost track because I fell about nine days ago on my knee in the garage and broke my kneecap. Very good uh, result considering I only have the one break and it's vertical and nothing is torn, they think, and so no surgery needed. PT starts in a few weeks. So in the meantime, I'm wearing a knee brace and I have a protocol for uh, that I'm using on my knee including comfrey and arnica, peppermint essential oil, and a proprietary blend of herbs. My friend who's been here helping me for eight days just left a little while ago. She said, I just have to go down to the garden and harvest those wild goose peas for you. We meant to do it didn't get done. She was leaving this morning. She said, I just can't go. I said, you know, you don't have to do that. She said, I just can't, I just wouldn't feel right. So I managed to get on the four-wheeler and go down and observe. And at one point I just thought, wow, I've got a very colorful medley of vegetables that would look great in a stir fry. I mean, I know that we're doing a lot of canning of tomatoes and squash and, and green beans and pickling, cucumbers, etc. But what do you do when you just go down and even even my friend said, well I didn't harvest the purple beans because there, there, weren't, an, there weren't enough, you know, and I said, hmm, okay if I've got four purple beans and I've got six yellow beans and I've got a little okra and I've got some hot pepper and some sweet pepper and an onion and some garlic, and you add your green, which is okra, and most especially sweet potato leaves. Now, sweet potato leaves, did you know they're more nutritious than the root itself? Yes. So, we are going to make a veggie medley stir-fry that I am going to eat over quinoa, and you could certainly use rice, make it more of an Asian flavorings, use those Asian flavorings that are so wonderful. And that's what we're going to do today, so I hope you'll stick around. This will be quick. <laughs> this is what I put together, and I, I certainly could do more. I have purple potatoes. That would be <laughs> very interesting, but potatoes don't cook um, in a flash fry like uh, these vegetables do. They cook very fast if you cut them certain sizes and you put them in in a certain order. If you've never done a stir fry, that's the that's the key to a great stir fry is you put vegetables in at a certain order. So by the time you get in the most tender vegetables, they cook the least amount of time. And that way you can do as I love to do, one pot meal. This is a chocolate sweet chocolate pepper. This is granada pepper, which has uh, got a little bit of heat, not much, but it's got a beautiful yellow coloring. And of course I've got one uh, serrano. These are doe hill, which are sweet peppers. And that's about as big as they're getting now towards the end of the season. I've got some okra in here, and these are the yellow beans. I added one plant late in the season, and I have a couple of plants of the purple beans. And these are from Botanical Interests and you can order from Botanical Interests with my link underneath the video. These are the sweet potato leaves. And I just, whoops, I just washed everything up and I forgot that was just balancing there like a pendulum. And here are the leaves. You want to pick out the freshest leaves. I just clipped off the end of the vine and I'm going to take the leaf off of the stem and chop them up and they go in last because they cook very quickly. My quinoa is going to be just perfect by the time I get my stir fry 
finish, so we'll set that off. This over. I just put a couple of tablespoons of avocado oil. You could use any kind of high heat uh, frying oil that's, um, you know, hopefully it's going to be a healthy oil and not a seed oil like walnut. You could use walnut, avocado. So, again, in case you haven't done a stir fry before, you want to have everything prepared in advance. And it is said that if you cut the vegetables at a diagonal, that they're better. I can't say for sure. But they certainly look prettier if they're cut at an angle. Diagonal. So the beans are going to be in the longest because they're, you know, the densest, the toughest, especially that bean. That's, this bean is, is going to get the small treatment. That's the great thing about a stir fry is you can improvise. You can just change it up. You know, you could saute whatever you wanted here, and then just as things got soft, you could put it in with your scrambled eggs and have a veggie scramble. But we're going to do a stir fry and serve it over quinoa. So I've got the purple and yellow beans, and the okra, and sweet potato leaves, and the chocolate, and Doe Hill sweet peppers. This is an Amish paste, and I had my garlic and a shallot. I'm using a shallot that I grew last year, and the hot peppers. A little onion. Yeah. Now in the south, we cook our beans for a long time. <laughs> But when you're doing it this way, you want crisp, crunchy, flavorful, and not cooked down to mush. some bone broth that I made. Ooh, that smells good. Let that melt. This is just going to give us a little bit of gravy. Meld all the flavors together. You could use chicken broth. This happens to be something I made for myself as soon as I got hurt. Now you could put in some white wine white cooking wine, or I happen to have some homemade pear wine vinegar. Just going to put in a dash of that. Sweet potato leaves are getting cooked down. Let's test a pepper. Mm. One more minute. Isn't that colorful? Red, yellow, green, brown. I just made a roux of cornstarch and water. And we're going to put that in. That's going to thicken up our 
gravy. Turn down the heat. Doesn't that look good? Now if you really want to get exotic, you can put in a spoonful of hoisin sauce. Hey, we made this Asian style after all. That's the beauty, you, you just improvise. Improvising your gardening, and also, I love toasted sesame oil. You just put that on at the end. Okay, I'm gonna, ooh, that smells wonderful. I'm gonna grab the sesame seeds and we are ready. Tamari is salty, but I like a little grind of pink Himalayan salt. Ideally, you would serve this over rice, but the beauty of quinoa, two things. Quinoa is a complete protein, whereas rice is not. So, your body needs complete proteins, and a complete protein besides meat, fish, eggs, and dairy would be beans and rice, for example. But quinoa, I believe it's the only one, is a complete protein in and of itself, and it cooks in 15 minutes, as opposed to 40. So if you're hungry and you want to eat fast and you want a complete protein because you're not serving meat, you might want to consider quinoa. Let's serve it up. Wow. Well, I gotta say, let's take a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Perfectly cooked. Try the okra. Perfect. Mm. Oops. <laughs> so you see, if you put them in in the right order, by the time you get them all in, then you're adding your sauces, your broth, your sauces, and your cornstarch roux that you made up with a little water, filtered water and then you have a nice consistency like a gravy to go over your rice. Now, as I said, you can stop it short, just get them stir-fried, throw in some scram scramble some eggs, throw that in there, and you've got a great veggie scramble. I hope that's helpful and I hope you tune in again real soon to my channel. Please leave me a comment if you've got a great recipe or a great idea for a one-pot meal. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.